Hello! Today, we are going to talk about malware, malicious software. What is it? How do I define it? But before I define it in the way that I define it, let's look at what Cisco.com says. Cisco.com says, what is malware? Malware, short for malicious software, refers to any intrusive software developed by cyber criminals, often called hackers, to steal data and damage or destroy computers or computer systems. I'm not really sure what the difference between a computer and a computer system is, but examples of common malware include viruses, worms, Trojan viruses, spyware, adware, ransomware. Okay, I don't like this definition. And I'm going to define a little bit simpler, but first, before we get to my definition, let's talk about some of these. So again, uh, lots of times people, when they talk about ma malware, they call it viruses. They refer to all malware as viruses. And there is a difference. A virus is a program that copies itself, either across a computer or across networks from one computer to another. Uh, on this, they, they list spyware and adware. Uh, that, that, that's most apps in the Google Play Store or, or iPhone App Store, right? So we have uh, spyware and we have adware that they're considering malicious software. And I, I would uh, mostly agree with that. Uh, but how would I define um, malicious software. What is malicious? So why, why is, how is it being malicious? And the thing is, what I consider malicious, you may not consider malicious. So my definition of malicious software breaks down into two things, right? You as the owner of a device, which is important, I'll get to that, back to that in a moment. As the owner of a device, if a piece of software does something you don't want it to do, or it prevents you from doing something, I would call that malicious software. And again, what you consider malicious may be different than me. So for example, let's say I write a script that uh, every day it runs and it looks at a directory and some subdirectories and it looks at any file that's older than a week and deletes it just to keep that, that, that folder clean. Well, that's great if I wanted to do that. But if I didn't want it to do that, that would be malicious software, right? Uh, also, as I said, it would keep the owner of the device from doing something. So let's say um, I want to do anything on my device and there's a piece of software preventing me from doing that. As the owner of the device, it, uh, it shouldn't prevent me from doing anything I want to do, whether it's going to a certain website or running a certain application. I mean, I've been on machines where they have antivirus installed, antivirus again, kind of the misuse of the, the term virus, but that's what it's known as. Um, and it will prevent me from running certain applications. Stuff that I wrote, it just, oh, I don't recognize this. So, And again, that goes back to also the owner of the device. Uh, so as the owner of the device, you should be able to do anything you want on it. Uh, there should be no restrictions for you. As long as it, the hardware can physically do it, you should be able to do it in software. And it shouldn't be doing anything you don't want it to do. And uh, if I let someone else or I go to use somebody else's computer, I'm not the owner of that, so there can be restrictions on it. And that's why you have user-based permissions. And I can um, you know, make rest restrictions on there. Let's say I don't want my family using Bing search because I don't like Microsoft. You know, uh, I can set a computer up to redirect anytime someone goes to Bing to whatever search engine. And I can duck, duck, go, or X search, or start page, or whatever. I can, whatever whatever search engine I say, someone out there is going to be like, oh, that's not a good one. It, it doesn't really, you know, preserve your privacy. But but whatever. As, as the owner of the device, I can put restrictions on users of people who don't own the device. But as the owner of the device, I should have no restrictions. Um, so, and again, uh, another example here is ransomware. We all know what ran ransomware. It encrypts files and then asks you to pay for the uh, decryption key. So, you can encrypt files on your device. That's up to you. You can encrypt files and throw the passphrase away if you want. That's your device. Uh, you know, what makes it malicious software is that somebody else is doing it to your device, to your files, without your permission, and not sharing the key, the passphrase, to unlock it, right? So it's not the fact that it's encrypting it. It's the fact that it's encrypting it in a way that you, as the owner of that device, does not want. So... Yeah, so that's how I would define uh, malware or malicious software. And the, the funny thing is, I, I've been getting a lot of comments lately because I've uh, made comments on uh, app-specific permissions on phones, which I think is just silly, and I will stand by that. And every single example uh, I've gotten is somebody going, well, I want to use this uh, application, but it does this, so I want to disable that. If that application doesn't have an option to disable that and you don't want it doing it and it's not a primary function of that application, 
I would define that as malicious software. I don't get why you would install an application that does something you don't want it to do. That's just silly. And people will come up with excuses like, oh, well, I have to for work. Well, if you have to for work, they should be supplying you with a phone. And then you're not the owner of the device, they are. Uh, no one can make you install something on your own device, especially something that would be malicious software. I mean, there's your argument right there. I'm not installing this malicious software on my personal device. I understand everyone's situation's a little different. Maybe they're saying you have to and they're not going to supply you with one. You know what? Phones are so cheap, okay? It's like, I, I literally, uh, I got one a year ago because I, I tend to get one every, you know, Black Friday or Cyber Monday because it cost me almost nothing. I got one two years ago for free. I just had to pay shipping. It was $15. Uh, last year, where's my phone? Right here. It's already done twice during this video. Uh, I paid $50 for that which was actually more than I wanted to pay, but it was only $50. Uh, the newer version of this Motorola phone currently is, you know, the original price was like two or 300 bucks. It's on sale right now for 50 bucks. Next week from when I'm recording this is Black Friday and then Cyber Monday after that. If it's $50 this week, I'm really hoping it's free during those sales and I'm going to get a phone for free even though I, I don't really need one. So that's why I got a stack of phones here because I pay like $15 for them. And literally this is my phone from... 2015. It's a Nexus phone, Nexus 5X. And literally, I have it for testing software if I need to run some proprietary software on a device. Now, I, I get um, that we don't live in a perfect world. Uh, I try to only use free and open source applications on my phone, but there's drivers. That, and, and of course, a single line of code in any application uh, can be malicious and it's it's game over. Someone wrote recently in one of the comments on one of my videos uh, that um, it, you know security is not a an all or nothing. Yes, it is. One line of malicious code can download multiple lines of malicious code, and, and there's really no way to stop it if you let it run. Um, and that's why you need to be careful about what you pick and what you use on your devices. Um, and you know what? Uh, I should have said this at the beginning, but you do whatever you want on your device. But the thing is, I hate when people install these, what I would consider malicious software, and then complain about it. And you can say, oh, I don't consider that malicious software. If it's doing something you don't want it to do, it is malicious. That's what malicious software is. And to say, oh, well, I'm going to install this application, which is going to do something I don't want to, but then I'm going to use a third party, you know, uh, setting on my device to try to stop that one application. If it's trying to do something, it's going to circumvent that. If, if your user has permission to do something and you're saying, oh, well, this app, I'm not going to let it do it, it, it can find a way. Trust me. And also another big thing is, this is a whole nother thing, but why are you installing all these? I look at people's phones and they have all these apps, like pages and pages of apps. And it's like your phone or desktop computer, laptop computer out of the box should be able to do 99% of the things you need it to do on a phone. The only real applications you need to install uh, would be things that run in the background, stuff that you need. For example, you know, I could use something like uh, Jitsi. Jitsi is a free and open source um, application for, for video chats. And I do that through the web browser. I don't need to install it. I can do it through the web browser on here. Um, and that's great. I can also install the application. But the thing is, the big drawback to that, whether I have the app installed or not, is uh, notifications. So usually what happens is if I'm at work, my wife texts me and say, hey, you want a Jitsi? And then we log into the room that we always log into that we have bookmarked in our browsers. Uh, but if you want to, uh, to get a notification of some sort, you need an application that runs in the background all the time and checks for incoming messages. So really... The only, I don't want to say the only, but one of the main reasons to install an application is because you need it running in the background, either to check stuff or wait for incoming messages or send things periodically. And that's the number one complaint I hear about people is like, oh, well, I, I want to install an app, but, but there's so many, they do stuff in the background. Well, the question is, is it supposed to be doing something in the background? In which case you want it to, that's why you installed it. If you don't want it to be doing stuff in the background, why did you install it in the first place? I don't get that. If I don't want something running in, my back, in the background, I'm not going to install it and have it run in the background. If it's running in the background and you don't want it to, and there's no option to disable that within the application, then it's malicious software. I, I, I just, it's just, to me, it's so simple. It's like, 
if a program does something you don't want it to do, I'm just getting repetitive now, but if you don't want it to do it, don't install it. Don't install it and then say, well, uh, you know, I'm just going to check a box in another application that says, don't let this program do that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I know I'm going to get a lot of comments on this video telling me that I'm wrong and try to give me scenarios where that's not true. But it's like, again, if it's doing something you don't want it to do, it is malicious software, don't install it. Okay? Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Put all your complaints in the comments below, and I hope that you have a great day.